Hello, I'm Kendall House, and this presentation is called The Outer Limit of Hamilton's Rule. So Hamilton's Rule, as we've discussed it, is all about what we called the power of R, and that's the power of relatedness to transform altruism into cooperation and selfishness into spite. And this is all based on the weight of relatedness against the benefit of an act as opposed to the cost. But R has its limits. And in this presentation, we're going to look at the outer limit of R. And the key to the outer limit of R is pretty obvious. And this has to do with the fact that relatedness decays exponentially, and it does so at a very rapid rate. So with each step that we take away from ourself in terms of relatedness, R will decline by half. And to illustrate this, your relatedness to yourself or a clone of you is 1.0. But when we take one step away from you to your offspring, we have to multiply that 1.0 by 0.5. So your relatedness to your own child is just 0.5. In the same sense, your relatedness to your parent is 0.5. And your relatedness to your full siblings is 0.5. Because of that, an offspring of your full sibling is related to you at the level of 0.25. So to go from your sibling to a niece or a nephew, we multiply 0.5 times 0.5, and we get 0.25. That's also your relatedness to a grandchild, or to a sibling of your parent, who we call an aunt or uncle. And that means to go to the offspring of one of those siblings of your parents, who we refer to as first cousins, we have to multiply 0.25 by 0.5, and that gives us 0.125. So relatedness rapidly approaches zero as we continue to take a step and a step and a step away from us. We're going to be going from a half to a quarter to an eighth to a sixteenth to a thirty-second. And this is called, in mathematics, exponential decay. And at just ten removes away, relatedness is going to be one one thousand twenty-fourth. So why does this matter so much? Well, imagine that we have a teeter-totter, and on one end of it, we put one of your offspring whose size is proportional to their reproductive value to you, which is 0.5. To balance out against them, we need two nieces or nephews who weigh in at 0.25 each. So at this level of difference, the benefit has to be two times greater than the cost, which means that you would have to help your sibling raise at least two offspring to offset each child of your own. If we take another step out to a first cousin where R is equal to 0.125, now we have to imagine that one child being four times larger than each first cousin in terms of reproductive benefit. And this is measured in indirect fitness in the case of the cousins and direct fitness in the case of the child, but now you have to imagine helping raise four first cousins in order to get the same kind of inclusive fitness that you could achieve directly through just one child. The benefit must be four times greater than the cost. If we take yet another step out to what we call second cousins, this is actually two steps beyond a first cousin. Now R is equal to 0 0.03125, and now that child looks very large relative to these second cousins because it takes 16 of them to amount to the same 
reproductive value in terms of indirect fitness that the one child amounts to in terms of direct fitness. And this is getting quite difficult to wrap our heads around. How do we find enough energy to assist in raising those 16 second cousins for each child that we forego as a benefit now must be 16 times greater than the cost. And indeed, this does seem to matter empirically when we look at non-human primates. Humans do have concepts like second cousins, but often we kind of collapse them conceptually with first cousins. But if we look at nepotism in primates and their ability to recognize kin, it seems to fade out at what humans call a first cousin at the level of r equal to 1.25. And this tells us that there's an outer limit to Hamilton's rule, an outer limit to effective bias towards relatives, and that Hamilton's rule is about our direct fitness of parent and offspring combined with indirect fitness among close kin, that we can indeed observe aunts and uncles investing in nieces and biases towards first cousins, but as we go a step out from that and another step indeed, then nepotism seems to fade quickly because relatedness is fading quickly. Thank you for listening.